G'day, my name's Paul and this is my face and to the untrained eye there doesn't seem to be any major problem there but to the skin doctor at my local clinic he found what looked like a BCC or a basal cell carcinoma and when you stretch my nose you see the little white speck there and he said if you don't do something about that it could cause a major problem to your face as is seen by these photographs so I had some choices I could either go for surgery and cut it out or do nothing and face the consequences in time or take radiology so after taking a a pathological sample of this particular part of my body they discovered and confirmed that it was a BCC and I decided it needed to come out so I didn't particularly fancy surgery because the plans were quite traumatic looking at the way the doctor described what he was going to do so I've decided to go for radiology and this is a 15 treatment program over three weeks five days a week go every day for just less than a minute treatment and uh, this little video will show you exactly how that is done and in time I'm expecting to see a nice clean skin without the BCC so here it goes we went along to the skin clinic just skin it's called and beautifully welcomed and started the treatment Good morning, welcome to the Just Skin Clinic. My name is Alexia. Uh, can I see a tea of coffee or anything yeah, before you go through? Yeah, yeah. yeah. would you like a flat white oh, or a flat light? White. Flat white, all right, I'll get to that. And uh, Marty, the radiation therapist, he'll be with you shortly. First of all, we're just going to draw on where the skin cancer was. So, this tracing was made by the radiation oncologist, Dr. Dix, and it just outlines where the, where the skin cancer is and where we're actually treating. So it just gives us a good marker of, once we've got all our shields on that, we're getting the right spot. So next, all Paul's job is to stay nice and still. So he put a little bit of tape on his forehead just to give him a little bit of stability so then he doesn't have to worry about moving. So we're only as accurate as how still Paul is. And we're going to put some shields on. So we're a long way away from Paul's eyes, but just out of good practice, we put eye shields on just in case he moves. We also put on a shield just below his nose. And this will just protect anything that's his teeth or his gums if he moves, so. The last shield we put in is just a shield that will shield the inside of his nose. So, as you can see, we'll come in from the side, but it'll just shield anything behind. So it just will minimize any reaction inside the nostril. X-rays also don't like air gaps, so there's obviously a lot of air in your nostrils. So what we do to avoid that is to put some wet gauze in Paul's nose. So that just fills up those air gaps and it makes the X-rays um, really predictable in their behaviour and means that we know we're getting the right dose to the, to the skin cancer on there. So Paul's all pretty close to ready to go. And then we put the prescribed field size on Paul. So we can line those up to those dots nicely. And lastly, but most importantly, we just get the machine and the machine just rests against Paul's. So it comes in, it doesn't push, it doesn't hurt. It literally just has to rest against there with some nice contact. And we lock that in. So now we're ready to go. Um, the machine's only on for about 40 seconds. Um, we'll be in and out within a minute. So next we've got Paul's, all of Paul's information stored in our record and verify system. And it just records how long we have been on for and how long it, the treatment needs to be on for. 
So you can see that Paul's treatment's on for 0.76 of a mineral or a bit over 45 seconds. And it tells us how what energy we're treating with, so what depth we can treat from a small as one millimetre depth um, for really superficial skin cancers through to about seven mils. So the computer automatically turns off when the treatment's delivered, so and there's some backup um, systems as well to make sure that the x-ray is never on for longer than they should be. Got a video system to monitor Paul at all times. Um, no one has ever needed me to come in, but if they do, at least we know we can see them. And that's it. Okay, and then we just get everything off, and Paul's all already so we give the treatment itself is really quick most of the time spent setting Paul up but really only a five minute procedure and we got to do it how many times uh, between 10 and 20 so depending on the person but I think you call it's 15 isn't it 15 yeah 15 times. okay so we're done Thank you. So we're all good. Sometimes, so all cleaned up. Yeah. Good. Ready to go. Thank you very much. Can't feel a thing. While well, that's happening, don't feel anything. So over the next few weeks, what usually happens is that you'll the skin will start to dry out and you'll notice a little red patch where the skin gets inflamed around where we're treating. It's very localised, so it's only in the area that we're actually treating, so where that skin cancer is and a little bit of the surrounding tissue, which Colin has also included in the treatment field to make sure there's no microscopic disease. So it, it'll inflame and go a little bit red to begin with. And then as it progresses, that reddening becomes a little bit, little bit stronger, more bold, and the skin cancer has to die. So at some point, that skin cancer will start um, start dying, those cells will start dying and you'll be left with an area that's either a bit weepy or a bit scabby for, for a little while. And then after that, a couple of weeks later it'll heal up. Inside the nostril might get a little bit dry. So feel free to put some Vaseline up there if you like, just to moisten it. But we're not expecting it to be anything, anything too bad. So make sure you let us know if there is any unexpected problems that you're having. So how's your nose feeling? Feels okay. Yeah. And uh, just wondering how long this wet, weepy thing will go for now. It's been two weeks since I had any treatment. So it's been two weeks already. Two, when we two weeks with today. The fourth, yeah. yeah. Set, sort of settles down after about that two week period. So we need the new skin to grow through and form a new layer. So it's. It's still a quite red sore. Have you been putting cream on there? Yeah, it's got cream on it as well. Which one have you been putting on? The antibiotic one. Yeah. And I had a shower yeah. and, and, and the scab come off in the shower. Yeah. Should I encourage that to come off or not? Um, it's six of the one, half a dozen of the other. It forms a protective barrier on there for you. So if it's on, it's, it's protective. But if it comes off, not to worry about it. But the new skin cells just need to grow through there. Um, and they're coming along quite nicely. It's probably weeping less than it used to. Or yeah, it's, yeah. It seems to be So in about a week, it'll it'll come up quite nicely. Um, it it'll be red and sore for another good month, and then it will not sore, but it'll be red for another month, and gradually it'll fade and it'll blend into your normal skin. And I've got to compare this treatment because as long as as much as it takes a long time, 
if they do surgery, they cut down onto your um, cartilage, they take skin from somewhere else, put a skin graft on, or so this is a long period, but there's a bit of method in the madness to do it because mm. it allows gradual healing of your skin underneath. It's yeah. going to come up good, but it looks pretty sore still. There's some uh, bleeding inside occasionally, yeah, um, and and hardening scabs or whatever. But I stick a wet gauze up there and soften it before it comes out. Yeah, that should settle down in the next week or two. So yeah. the first two weeks afterwards are the worst two weeks, mm -hmm. and then they will slowly improve after that. Okay. Yeah. I think we're due to come back and see you in a month's time. That's right. So have you got enough of that antibiotic ointment? Uh, I think maybe you should get another script. Just want to go back to ban, yeah. Yeah. Let's give you another script for some more. Now, have you been putting a bit in your nose as well? A little bit sometimes, yeah. not much. It doesn't seem to be rawness up the nose, although it is bleeding. On, on the other side, I'm bleeding up in this one more than in the right side, which is amazing. Yeah, that's quite unusual, so... Yeah. yeah. Better, better well, it's got to be a good result. I need you to have a great-looking nose for all the effort that you've been through. I oh, want a good <laughs> result. <laughs> the, where the BCC was, there's a tiny little white spot in it after the shower this morning. I don't know whether you can see it there now. Yeah. Is that... means that it's still there, or...? No, that's just the underlying subcutaneous tissue. So that's just repair. The, the cancer cells would have died down. Yeah. And the repair is just covering up that raw skin underneath. So yeah, okay. what happens is that at the, at the when you start treating the skin, you've got intact skin and the cells in the epidermis are replacing themselves every two weeks. When we start treating, we, we switch off the factory so that the new skin cells are not being repaired and replaced. And after the treatment, there's a hole because the factory shut down. There haven't been new cells coming through. Once we stop the treatment, the new cells grow from the side and underneath, and they will quickly replenish the hole and fill it up with good skin. But the cancer cells are gone, so they're not going to bother you. And you just need repair. And it's for every one, two to three weeks. It's pretty sore and uncomfortable for that period, but it's still nice than having two holes where they've done the graft where they've treating your nose or more plastic surgery and we've got a 95% chance that that's never going to bother you again. That's good. And it's got to look good because you know that's why we've done this slow mm. treatment. So is it going to repair from the edges in? From the edges in and from underneath coming up as well. So the new cells, just like digging a hole in your lawn, mm -hmm. if you dug a hole the new lawn would grow in and fill it up eventually and it, you wouldn't notice that you've ever had anything wrong there. So That's great. Yeah. Yeah, I can see the colouring on the edges is starting to change. Yeah, it, it, so around the edges it's looking good. You can see the new skin coming in from the edges, yeah. and that will just slowly grow up. And it, and it work, once it gets going, it's quite quick. But we'll give you some antibody cream just to keep infections away, mm -hmm. because they are the biggest risk we have at this period, is that there's a bit of skin breakdown, and we've got to watch out for the infection. Okay. Okay, good. Okay. So Bactroban, we'll give you another month of that. I want to catch up in a month. In a month's time, I expect your skin to be maybe still a bit pink, but it should be covered over and should be looking good, and that will blend into your normal skin over the next six months. Okay. Yeah. These photographs will show you how the, the wound progressed in the last two weeks um, on the way to healing. And you'll see that um, it was quite large to start with. Every day that scab would come off and a new scab would form. And then in the shower the next day the scab would come off again. But in, in two weeks uh, it did diminish each day. It was getting smaller and smaller. New skin growing in from the perimeter and the, the open wound was getting smaller and smaller every day until finally um, it got right down really small and eventually the tiny little scab washed off in the shower and we had new skin all over. It was a great thrill. You get to appreciate your skin after you've been through this sort of treatment. Yes, there's no doubt about it. If you choose radiology, 
to eliminate a BCC. It's a slower process than surgery, but I do believe it would be more efficient in terms of the final skin appearance without cosmetic surgery. So here you'll see how the radiation killed all the skin cells on the nose to at least the size of a 10 cent piece and then it took another two or three weeks to heal up. I started the treatment on the 14th of January and it is now the 11th of March so nearly two months the whole process from radiation and to healing. Two months of uh, treatment to get a nice finished product at the end. There was no pain involved in the ongoing healing of the nose. Um, occasionally there would be a little bit of bleeding inside the nostril but there was no pain involved even though I talked to others who said there was pain. I had no pain so from my experience it was very good and I used to apply the antibiotic ointment to the open wound to keep it from getting infected. So that's my story with having a BCC removed by radiation at the radiotherapist. I wish you all the best with your journey. See you later.